Today is the Feast of St. Thomas, Apostle. First Reading Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19-22 Brothers and sisters, you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the holy ones and members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus Himself as the capstone. Through Him, the whole structure is held together and grows into a temple sacred in the Lord, in Him, you also are being built together into a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations, glorify Him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For steadfast is His kindness for us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Gospel Reading John Chapter 20, Verses 24-29 Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. The Gospel of the Lord The Appearances of the Risen One From the Catechism of the Catholic Church, Paragraph 641-644 Mary Magdalene and the holy women who came to finish anointing the body of Jesus, which had been buried in haste because the Sabbath began on the evening of Good Friday, were the first to encounter the Risen One. Thus the women were the first messengers of Christ's resurrection for the Apostles themselves. They were the next to whom Jesus appears, first Peter, then the Twelve. Peter had been called to strengthen the faith of his brothers, and so sees the Risen One before them, it is on the basis of his testimony that the community exclaims, The Lord has risen indeed, and has appeared to Simon. Everything that happened during those Pascal days involves each of the Apostles, and Peter in particular, in the building of the new era begun on Easter morning. As witnesses of the Risen One, they remain the foundation stones of his Church. The faith of the first community of believers is based on the witness of concrete men known to the Christians and for the most part still living among them. Peter and the Twelve are the primary witnesses to his resurrection, but they are not the only ones. Paul speaks clearly of more than 500 persons to whom Jesus appeared on a single occasion and also of James and of all the Apostles. Given all these testimonies, Christ's resurrection cannot be interpreted as something outside the physical order, and it is impossible not to acknowledge it as an historical fact. It is clear from the facts that the disciples' faith was drastically put to the test by their Master's passion and death on the cross, which he had foretold. The shock provoked by the passion was so great that at least some of the disciples did not at once believe in the news of the resurrection. Far from showing us a community seized by a mystical exaltation, the Gospels present us with disciples demoralized, looking sad, and frightened. For they had not believed the holy women returning from the tomb and had regarded their words as an idle tale. When Jesus reveals himself to the eleven on Easter evening, he upbraided them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen. 
Even when faced with the reality of the risen Jesus the disciples are still doubtful, so impossible did the thing seem, they thought they were seeing a ghost. In their joy, they were still disbelieving and still wondering. Thomas will also experience the test of doubt and St. Matthew relates that during the risen Lord's last appearance in Galilee some doubted. Therefore the hypothesis that the resurrection was produced by the Apostles' faith, or credulity, will not hold up. On the contrary, their faith in the resurrection was born, under the action of divine grace, from their direct experience of the reality of the risen Jesus.